R2, I'm a little busy. Look, I'm trying to make some progress on the Millennium Falcon seating area. What do you mean, lonely? Droid companionship? Aren't I enough? Well, who? Who do you want me to make? Dia. Oh, Conehead. I can do that. Hey guys, James, great to be back. Thank you so much for following and liking and commenting. It's been really humbling so far and I'm glad you've enjoyed the last few episodes. So I loved the Rise of Skywalker and I loved the look of the sets and the droids even more. And of course, R2 is feeling a little bit lonely so I'm gonna make him his very own Dio. And I'm gonna do that almost completely out of EVA foam using HD foam and a couple of floor mats that I had lying around. In my description there's a link to the foam that I used and also the paints I used from my amazing supplier and sponsor, Tide Supplies. I think this is quite an interesting build. There's three main elements to Dio. There's the wheel, the neck and the head. And other than the two interconnecting rods, which are just two different thicknesses of wooden dowels, the whole build is made from foam. Now my version of Dio is by no way screen accurate, although I think he's getting there. I did pay particular attention to the paintwork. I really wanted to get some kind of cool finish on there with some interesting paints and weathering and it was kind of the first time I've ever really tried anything like this. Anyway guys, if you want to grab yourself a copy of the plans and build along, I've made them available to you. If not, just enjoy the build video. This video isn't a tutorial, but you certainly get the idea from watching some of the approaches I take when working with the foam. Now it was important to get the 3D model down in 3D Max because it was always my intention to take that model into a program called Pepicura. In Pepicura you are able to unwrap 3D models, cut out and then traced onto foam. Now there's lots of advice out there on how to work with the EVA foam. One of my biggest tips however is to use contact cement. You simply apply it to both of the surfaces that you want to glue to each other. You then wait five to 10 minutes until it dries to attack, and then you quickly push together, quickly but carefully, making sure that you get your seams just right. Time you spend getting your seams right now is gonna save you time towards the end of your build, because you can almost get away with sanding and filling joints if you get them right at this stage. Dio's track does have a curvature to it and there was a little bit of a trick to get that with foam. I cut two extra lengths, the same length as the track, one was slightly thinner and it enabled me to pack out the inside of the track, giving the edges a bit of a fall off. When you get to the stage of drawing around your plans onto the foam, I used a gold sharpie. I was also very careful the way I placed the plans onto the foam before tracing. I wanted to use as less foam as possible. I used a nice sharp craft knife because this foam is only five millimeters, nice and easy to work with.
So having those plans of Pepecura and being able to print them out onto the foam was vital to make this thing look realistic. And it made the whole build process nice and easy when it came to transferring those shapes into the EVA foam. There were two main colours to get just right on this Dio build when it came to painting. The cool green and off-white that you can see in the film. I use Flexi Paint White and their range of acrylics to mix my own custom colours. I used the reference images whilst I was mixing the colours just to make sure I didn't go too far. This is actually an old video. When I built Dio it was even before the movie was released and I was using references such as Star Wars Celebration where an actually different droid rolled onto the stage. Um, that, along with a few screenshots I found online, was what I used as my reference for Dio. When the books came out, of course, I purchased The Art of Star Wars and The Visual Guide, and I found a lot more reference in there. wanted my droid to have a little bit of interactivity. So I jumped online and I got myself a sound recorder, the kind of thing that you can buy and put in greeting cards and record your own message. The one I purchased had a built-in light sensor and this meant whenever it sensed a change in light it would trigger the sound. I then captured a couple of different lines from the film. These now play whenever the light changes in the room. Alone. It is quite special. In next week's episode I'm going to show you how I build a Rebel Communications Terminal that doubles as a wireless charger for my phone and a stand for my tablet. I'm dead excited to start getting to work on the room itself and I've been spending a bit of time down in the garage doing just that this week and I can't wait to share that with you. So guys if you haven't already subscribed please do so and hit that bell. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we create something from a galaxy far, far away.